No crying in baseball, the Tour de France, and the CIA are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is July 1st, 2022. It is the 182nd day of the year. We got 183 days left. We're about at the midway point, if my math is correct. Today is the 26th Friday in the 27th week. And the 11th day is summer, and we got some new birthstones. Ruby or an onyx. Today is National U.S. Postage Stamp Day and National Postal Worker Day. On July 1st, National U.S. Postage Stamp Day recognizes the ease and simplicity with which we can send and receive mail. A stamp represents payment for delivery of a letter or package. The United States issued its first postage stamp on July 1st, 1847. At the time, stamps were not required. A letter could be mailed without a stamp and delivery paid for by the recipient. Basically, they had to pay for it when it got there, which was a pretty dumb thing. I mean... It, something would get someplace, they wouldn't pay the postal worker. The postal worker's got to spend time waiting for them to, you know, pay for it or, you know, argue with them that they're not going to pay for it. Just a whole lot of hassle. And if they don't pay for it, they got to take it back. So they just kind of got away with that. In 1855, the postage stamp became mandatory. There are people that collect postage stamps. Stamps often have a fascinating history. You know, they always offer these ones, you know, like Elvis on it or the moon landing. Things like that have always made collector stamps that you could use, but a lot of people will just collect them. I have a whole sheet of Marvel comic ones that came out, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. I've kept those like I got the real Mona Lisa in my cabinet back here. Today, like I said, is also National Postal Worker Day. Again, July 1st recognizes postal workers all across the nation and encourages us to show our appreciation. We should thank the numerous men and women who work consistently and diligently deliver all of our mail. Sadly, I think that's an industry that's, you know, pretty much going away. I think it peaked probably about 20 something years ago. Emails kind of killed it, and then UPS and Amazon and Federal Express, they dipped into the U.S. Postal System's business. I'm sure it'll always be around, at least in our lifetime, at some level, but nothing like it used to be, obviously. All right, let's see what else July 1st has given us. 1863, the American Civil War, the Battle of Gettysburg, begins. <laughs> In the spring of 1863, the Civil War was near the end of its third year. Confederate General Robert E. Lee was riding high after a big win against a larger Union force. Lee took this opportunity to ride down to Richmond, Virginia and have a chat with Confederate President Jefferson Davis. At that meeting, Lee said he was going to invade the North, which a couple years ago seemed impossible. About the time this plan was being hatched, the Union's best general, Ulysses S. Grant, was about 40 days into the siege of Vicksburg, which essentially shut down the Mississippi rivers, making it next to impossible for the Confederate army to resupply themselves. They really got into looting towns and basically stealing anything they could from any farm they came across. The Union army and President Lincoln knew that Lee was on the move north and the Union really wasn't sure where and who would oppose him when he finally did appear. Rumors started to swirl that Lee was crossing the Potomac River into Pennsylvania and people started to panic. On June 27th, President Lincoln put General George Meade in command of the Union Army. Around this time, they knew Lee was heading towards Gettysburg and a Confederate cavalry unit was heading there from the west. By June 30th, both armies had settled into their positions around the small town of Gettysburg. The combined force numbered around 75,000. Over the next three days, what probably looked like Armageddon took place in and around Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. In the end, the Union forces won like we all know. Sadly, 20 to 25,000 Americans were either killed in action or became casualties of war. This is just a guess, but I'm sure around 50,000 more never fully recovered mentally. A few months later, President Lincoln traveled to Gettysburg and delivered the Gettysburg Address, which has the famous line, four score and seven years ago. 1870, the United States Department of Justice formally comes into existence. We've been talking about this last few days, but this they finally signed all the paperwork and they were in business. 1881, the world's first international telephone call is made between New Brunswick, Canada and Maine in the United States. They're right next to each other. Technically, it's an international call, but you're really just called the state next to you, kind of. I'd be more impressed if that call was made from Vancouver, Canada. 1903, the start of the first Tour de France bicycle race goes down in France, in case you didn't clue into that with the name of it, the Tour de France. 1908, SOS is adopted as the international distress signal. 1922, the Great Railroad Strike of 1922 begins in the United States. 1931, United Airlines begins service. Back then it was called Boeing Air Transport. 
1963 zip codes are introduced in the United States mail. That's interesting. I didn't know we didn't have zip codes before 1963. 1968, the United States Central Intelligence Agency's Phoenix program is officially established. This was not a good thing. The Phoenix program basically tortured, kidnapped, and assassinated the local population for helping the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War. Obviously, it wasn't here in the United States. It was in Vietnam. This went against everything the Geneva Convention was set up for. Not one of our finest moments here in the United States. 1979, Sony introduces the Walkman. I had one. It was amazing. I think I got my 1980. I could not believe this thing was real. My sister had a boyfriend at the time who was like, in all the roller skating magazines and skateboarding type stuff. And he'd gotten some from Sony. Sony was like hand them out to try and get them to sponsor him. And he gave me one. It was the greatest gift I ever got. 1984, the PG rating is introduced. This was set up assuming that your parents weren't total idiots. You know, it's parental guidance. So if your parents said it was okay to see this movie, it was okay. But not every parent is normal. 1987, the American radio station WFAN in New York City is launched as the world's first all sports radio station. I remember when ESPN came out and it was like 24 hours of just sports. I was like, what? That's impossible. You know, I what was the point of it? I didn't understand if that was even going to happen. And here we are. It's still going and it's great. But at the time I was like, what? Do, you know, how is this good thing? Movies released on July 1st, 1992, A League of Their Own. This was a great movie. Tom Hanks, Gina Davis, Madonna, Rosie O'Donnell, Tia Leone's in this one, Lori Petty. It was directed by Penny Marshall. Tom Hanks played such a good part in this movie. If you've never seen it, which I think everyone in the United States has seen this because it's that good of a movie. But if you've never seen it, it's definitely worth watching. And it's based on the true story of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. During World War II, they still wanted to have baseball for the people at home, but most of the men had been sent to war, so they didn't have enough people to put on the field, so they decided to start this all-girls professional baseball league. It only lasted a couple of years till the war was over, but it was really, really cool. Um, John Lovitz was also in there, and he played a great part. They also had Gary Marshall was in there, and Bill Pullman, who you don't see him much anymore. He peaked in 1996 with Independence Day. He played the President of the United States. He was good in Bottle Shock, which I liked. That was in 2008, and The Equalizer in 2014. Haven't seen much of him since then. I mean, he's still been in movies. He's just not playing anything big anymore. But yeah, League of Their Own is definitely worth watching. Side note to that one, that was the last date I went on with someone besides my wife. I met my wife like a couple weeks later. Born on July 1st, 1961, Princess Diana. Everybody knows who she was. She is officially known as Diana, Princess of Wales. She married Charles, the Prince of Wales, and the heir to the throne of the 16 Commonwealth realm. Basically the UK, England, whatever. She became an international icon for her beauty and her work with charities. Her death, which was reportedly caused by the limo driver's drunkenness, sparked widespread media attention and conspiracy theories. My brother and his wife had bought their first home and were having a housewarming party the day she died. And everyone just, there's like 60 people there just staring at the television instead of enjoying her new house. My sister-in-law was very depressed in the whole situation. Died on July 1st. First, 1905, John Hay, personal assistant to Abraham Lincoln, who authored a biographical work about the former president in 1890. He also served as the 37th United States Secretary of State under President William McKinley and Theodore Roosevelt. He fought in the Union Army during the Civil War. They say Hayes' health had been deteriorating for years since the death of his son, which it's said he and his wife never recovered from. A friend described him in those years as a saddened, slowly dying old man. Officially, he died on July 1st of heart ailment and complications. He was 66 years old. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a productive day, and be nice to each other.